Oh my goodness, who can believe it is April already and what a three months we've had. Starting from this episode, episode two, I'll be releasing a Beyond the Cutline video every three months and it will contain the following uh, sections. Number one, a brief video review of all the videos I released in the previous three months. Two, a squash maths problem, just a silly little maths problem that's related to squash. Three, the general update of things that have been happening in the squash world. But don't worry, it's not going to be so specific. We're not going to be talking about results and all of those things. Just things that have happened within the squash community that I think you might be interested, plus my opinion of them. And finally, uh, finish with a specific section on my projects and things that I've been working on. Now, links to all of those sections are in the text description. So let's get started. I'll be talking about all of the videos in groups rather than in chronological order, but I can tell you that in January there were no public videos, but I did make quite a lot of remote squash coaching videos, which I'll talk about at the end, so I was busy. So I started with mindset tips. I made an introduction explaining what they were, and then I released three videos. Now, every Monday on my social media accounts, I release a photo or an image of a mindset tip. Every four, I put them into a video and I explain them in a little bit more detail. So that was a completely new series. So there's plenty of those things for you to look at. In addition, I started another new series called Book Reviews. And basically, as it sounds, I take a squash book and I review it. Now, in this case, I've only done one, which was the Book of Jonah. Spoiler alert, yes, you should read it, especially if you're interested in squash history and like biographies as well. So that was a, an, another new series that I released, the books. Squash for Beginners has been a series that I've been running for quite a while now. And in the last three months, I released four videos. The first one is called Choosing the Right Ball. And as the name suggests, it talks about making sure you're using the correct ball. Next one was Choosing Your First Racket. And there were two versions of that, the long one and the shorter, very concise one. And that's important because making sure that you don't spend too much money or buy the cheapest uh, is important when you first get your first racket. Sorry. Uh, next was how to grip the racket. That's really, really important. So I produced one of those and I also produced a how to re-grip the racket. So talking about how to put the two main types of grip on. So those were the squash for beginners videos that I released. Also released a photo coaching video. Haven't made a photo coaching video for a long time. And essentially, again, it's what it says, I take a photo, or in this case, a group of photos, and we look at how you can improve your technique by following what's happening in the photo. Uh, that was quite a long one. That was a 20 minute video, but it's really useful for getting the ball out of the corners. And that's what that focus on that fo photo coaching was, getting the ball out of the back corners. I released another one of my essays, which are just sort of more nebulous. They're just general ideas. This one was talking about using spectators to your advantage. Something interesting happened to me at the local sports facility before it closed. And I thought I'd share with that, that with you. So the essays are really just me giving my opinion about something. Another new series I released in 2020, pff, there were a lot, was called Silent Squash. Now you probably guess what it means just from the title. Basically, I release a video with no speaking. So if you find my voice annoying, this is the one for you. Sometimes the voice clarifies what's happening, but sometimes it makes it harder to see what's going on. So these videos only have images with some text. And of course, they can be paused and you can look at that. There must be many times that using a video with no voice would be useful. Perhaps if you have uh, trouble hearing and there's no subtitles, perhaps if you're in a place where it would be inappropriate to listen to the sound. So that's called silent coaching and uh, silent squash, sorry. And I don't produce every video as a silent squash video but some of them I do. And in fact, the photo coaching was one of those as well. There's two versions, the normal photo coaching plus the silent squash one. I also produced a video called five things you should be doing during the lockdown, but probably don't want to. Basically, you see lots of these videos where people are doing exercises and fitness work, and that's great. But there are other things that you should be doing and could be doing as well. And I talk about those in that in that video. 
And the final new sets of videos that I released in 2020 were challenges. Now, as I've already mentioned about the five things to do lockdown uh, video, lots of people are putting challenges on social media and the timing was a little bit un unlucky because I have been planning these for a lot, lot longer. Uh, my challenges are more serious than just like a trick shot. Not that trick shots aren't fun, but this is a little bit more commitment. So I released the introduction and I released the racket forearm twists, which is a 30 day, 10,000 challenge so if you're interested in challenges go check those out links to all of those videos are in the description squash maths what the heck is this well I love maths uh, I love watching YouTube channels uh, stand up maths and number file but I'm not particularly very good at maths so if you were worried that this is this section is going to be like really complicated don't be the most I'll be doing is some simple arithmetic basically the idea is that I was thinking about something the other day how many squash balls do you think would fit into a squash court? So I thought, okay, well, why don't I work it out? So that's what I did. And then the idea grew from that. So for 2020 in Beyond the Cut Line, I've got four simple maths ideas related to squash that we'll be exploring. So going back to that question, how many squash balls do you think would fit in a squash court? Now, let me just clarify the question here. We're not, pardon the pun, squashing them in. It's not how many we could squash in because that introduces too many variables. It's basically outside of the box, in the box wouldn't matter too much. How many balls could we put in all the way up to the top? Now remember the top line has the angle. Well imagine that we close that off. How many balls could we get in? I'm going to give you five choices. A hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, a million, two million, or three million. Take a moment to think about what your choice would be. Okay, chosen. Let's find out. Let's move over to the squash maths desk. So here's how I did my calculation. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a terrible squash court. Now, we know that the height of the court is at the back 213. We know that the length of the court is 7.5 meters. And of course that's 200, um, 2.13 meters. And we know that the total height of the court is 457. Now, the first thing we're going to do, just very, very quickly, is we're going to draw a line across here because I'm not able to do the maths otherwise. And we know that this is 213, so that means that this is 243. Now, we know that a squash ball is 40 millimeters, four centimeters. Here we go, we can see that there. Um, if I were to take a ball, it's not so clear, but you can see that that would be 40 centimeters. So what we need to do is, uh, four centimeters, sorry. So what we need to do is we need to do 213 divided by four, okay? So 213 divided by four gives us 53.25. Uh, now, um, what we're worried about is we're not worried about the 2.5. So 53. And then what we need to do is we need to do 975 divided by four equals 243. So divided by four gives us 243.75, but we're not worried about that. So the circles show us the number of balls. That means that I could get, just to be clear, 53 balls here, and I could get 200 and 43 balls here. Now I'm not going to worry about the, the tin which might stick out or anything like that. So now what I need to do is I need to do 243 times 53. And that gives me 12,879 balls within this area. Now, if we were to look at the floor of a squash court, not a particularly great drawing, but you get the point. That's there. Now we know that this width is 6.4 meters. All right, so what we do now is we do 640 divided by four. 640 divided by four gives us a total of 160. So we know that we can get 12,879 balls in this area. And now what we need to do is we know that we can do 160 balls, we need to times this by this. So 
12,879 times 160 gives us, this is the first number that we're interested in, 2,060,640. That is for balls within this area. Now I need to work out this area. Now my maths is not good enough to be able to work out the angles and whether a ball would go across here or not. I'm not worried about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out what this area worth of balls is and then I'm just going to divide it by two. So we go through the same process. We've got 244 divided by four gives us 61 divided by four. So that's 61 balls. So that would be 61 balls up here. Now we already know what this figure is. We know that it's 243. All right, so I now I do 243 times 61, and that gives us 14,823. But I need to times that by 160 to go all the way across. So times 160 gives us this divided by two gives us 1 million 185,840. So I plus 2060640 gives me a grand total of 3,246,480 squash balls on a squash court. Now, if you have done your calculations and you have a different score, then by all means tell me, because I really don't think that my maths is that great. But Philip, you say, wouldn't it be interesting to know how much all of those balls weigh? And I say, certainly it would. And even though this ball keeps moving and you say, oh, but Philip, it's a white ball. Perhaps it weighs different to a normal ball. I take a brand new ball. I do, I take a brand new ball. I put it on here, 23.5, 24, fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to times that number by 24. Uh, times 24. Uh, gives me this divided by 1000 gives me this so that means no that can't be right let's do that again 3,246,480 times by 24 there we go, 77,000, 77 million divided by 1,000. So this is in grams. So whatever number I get, I've got to divide it by 1,000. And that gives me 77,915.25 kilograms. That is more than the weight of a tank. More than the weight of a tank. So there you go. If you ever wanted to know how many squash balls could fit onto a squash court, it's over 3,246,000. So if you do your calculations and you disagree with me on the weight or on those, please do. Uh, please tell me in the comments. And next month, I'm going to do an even more complicated calculation. Not that this one was particularly complicated. So anyway, carry on with the show. Well, there you go. Who would believe that it was the same weight as a tank? And in fact, if you were to fill a squash court with water, it would weigh 209,000 kilos, which funnily enough is the average weight of a whale shark. I found that out, a little bit of factoid there if that was interesting for you. I'd like to thank Dennis, who is a uh, video game modeler for talking through the idea with me. And I'd also like to thank Dr. Matthew Crawford, an honest to God mathematician, who actually talked me through some of the more complicated maths. So if anybody's interested there, maybe I can release the, the actual document but it was close enough to know that my simple arithmetic was uh, more or less right so there we go just over three million a lot of squash balls 
Well, obviously, the main news over the last three months has been the coronavirus and how all of the clubs and other facilities have shut down. But what it has done is it's put a lot more content online and you only need to go to uh, Facebook, Twitter or Instagram to see so many trick shots and workouts. Now, I'm not going to be listing all of those things because if you're interested, you've probably seen them already. Or if not, then a quick search will do them. But everything else that I mention in this section, there will be a link in the text description. Now, sadly, as I'm kind Khan passed away due to the coronavirus. Now, Azim was a four-time world champion. Both um, Squash Mad and Squash Library did a very nice uh, obituary. And Jonah has said it really well about how he was like the accountant of the, the group of players at the time and how he was uh, like a little bird, so quiet on court. Such, a, such an interesting picture. There's a chance that I met him when I played at New Grampians, um, but honestly, I can't remember. So that's a little bit of a shame. Now, another Khan that's been in the news is Hashim Khan. Google decided to celebrate him and they produced a page which is you know you can see that now um, and this is him running around and hitting the ball so it's nice that squash gets recognition by Google because it doesn't really happen very often going back to the coronavirus uh, there was a, 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 a couple um, a gentleman and his girlfriend who actually built a squash court in one of their rooms of their house now they were inspired by another couple of guys who built it in the basement but this one inspired me because it was like in the house and and the red line goes around the window and it's so cool. So Sander van der Brackel, they built this thing. Now that's a wonderful thing to do. And of course, the, probably the neighbors weren't too happy, but they said that they only play for one hour a day during the day. Uh, and then they, you know, they're not gonna be bothering the neighbors. So that's a pretty cool thing. So go check that out as well. Talking about Andrew Shelley, who wrote the obituary for Azam Khan, um, Andrew Shelley runs the Squash Library. Now, if you don't know what the Squash Library is, it's a website, but he has been putting out content on Facebook and on Twitter, and the content is superb. It's absolutely fascinating, so you have to go follow him. It's about tournaments, it's about results, not so much about results, but it's about records, it's about courts, it's about rules. Really, if you've got any interest in the game besides just playing, you have to check out. And if I'm lucky enough to get to the UK this summer, in August perhaps, and I'm lucky enough to actually get to London as well, because they're two separate things, I'm going to be going to the Squash Library and I'll be bringing you a tour of the Squash Library. So that's pretty cool. So check out Squash Library on both uh, Twitter and Facebook link, of course, in the text description. Going back to February, professional player Daryl Selby got hit in the eye during a match. And from that point onwards, he decided and publicly announced that he was going to wear goggles. Now that is fantastic. And I've produced two videos about wearing goggles already, but it disheartens me that we have to be continually having this conversation. I seriously do not understand why it is not the rule. You have to wear goggles. Why do we have to wait until there's an injury? And if many years ago, um, Jonathan Power got hit in the eye and it was news for a little while. Now, juniors have to wear them, but when they get to 18, they don't. And I know that there are people who complain that they don't play as well. I know that there are people who complain that they're not particularly comfortable, but seriously, this is your eyesight. We should be doing everything to protect it. And just like seatbelts in cars, nobody complains about those. They did it at the beginning, but now you just wear them. They save lives. These goggles could save people's sight. So if you're new to squash and you haven't tried a pair of goggles, do it as soon as possible. If you've been playing squash for a long time and you haven't tried a pair of goggles, do it. They cost about $15 euros or pounds. Now you might say, I can't afford that. But over the, the year, you'll spend a lot more of that on balls and on grips and rackets and court fees. It's a small amount of money to protect your sight. I cannot stress this enough. Go and buy a pair, wear them, get used to them. You probably spend the next 40 years and you will say afterwards, well, that was a waste because I didn't need them, but that's much better than the other. Go and buy some goggles and use them every single time. 
Now on eBay, I saw a VHS for sale and I nearly bought it. It wasn't particularly expensive. It was the 1981 British Open between Jahangir Khan and Jeff Hunt. And I thought, wow, I'd love to do, I'd love to buy that. It's like a bit of memorabilia. And there were some other videos as well for sale, but then I thought, yeah, but I've probably got to buy a VHS player. And when that breaks down or, ah, so I didn't. But the good news is that that video, that match, is actually on YouTube already. So I'll link it, link to it in the text description, of course. You can go and watch it. And I'll be honest, if you watch for 10 or 15 minutes, you'll, you'll be doing well. It can be a little bit boring. The game is certainly not as dynamic. Not being able to see the ball clearly makes a huge difference. But you'll still be able to see what the game was like. And they hit the ball hard and they hit the ball pretty accurately. Not as accurately as nowadays. You know, I can't deny that. Um, but if we'd given them the rackets that we use now, back then, they would be just as good. I'm not making a comparison between players. I'm just saying that under those circumstances. So it's a piece of history and it's quite interesting. It doesn't just show uh, the final. It shows a little bit about the, um, the matches beforehand. Um, and there's a little piece about Kamazaman, who's one of my favorite players and it lasts about an hour so if you do about 10-15 minutes you'll be doing really well so go check that out over the years I've registered quite a lot of squash domains, squash challenges, uh, squash questions, uh, start squash, and I decided that there were just too many so what I've done is I've registered a new one called better squash and I'm going to put all of my projects into that one page. For those who are interested, they're actually called subdomains. So I'm gonna make everything a subdomain. So we're gonna switch views now, and I'm just gonna talk you through some of the pages uh, and how they relate to using them and the projects that I've been working on. So let's switch views for that. So here's the website. As you can see, it's called bettersquash.com. The first thing to tell you is that it is specifically designed to be simple and easy to use. I discounted the idea of a very flashy uh, graphical website. I wanted something that's easy to use. And with that in mind, it's responsive, which means that it will work quite well. In fact, it will work very well on any size device that you use. Everything will change. Now, if you were to go to one of the previous sites, for example, squashchallenges.com, it will immediately take you to the new site. So let's go back here. So this is the main page. Uh, it has the tra channel trailer, and then it has a list of what's new, and it gives you a list of all the things that I've added to the site, new videos I've posted, all of those kind of things. Statement down the bottom here, and then this is the main menu. This menu links to all of the pages that are currently uh, on the site. Then there's links to the social media and an email address. You'll always be able to go back to the main site from here, but at the top there will be a link as well. Now the, the sites that I want to talk to you about today are the squash coaching videos. So this is the first part of the site that I want to explain. Going to YouTube is great. Uh, YouTube is a wonderful site, but often it can be overwhelming. There's so many links and buttons and all sorts of things that it can be confusing. So this page, the videos.bettersquash.com, allows you to simply filter videos based on the type of playlist it is. So for example, if you only want to see the squash for beginners, you click it and poof, you can see them. Now, not all of them have been updated with the new thumbnail. Or you say, well, I want to see all the ones in 2020. Poof, there you go, you can see all of those. Clicking on the image will take you to the video itself. If you want to see the intros for the new series, you can see them here. So this is the videos page, and as time goes on, I'll be adding more buttons here, and if you want to see all of them again, you click them here. And the order that they are in is the order that they have been published. So at the point of time, this is the latest one I've added. Not all of my videos are here, but I will be adding them over time. So scroll down to the bottom and the next page that I want to talk to you about is the mindset tips. So the mindset tips uh, as I mentioned earlier on about the videos I released they've got their own page and this is the page got the introduction just a reminder this is not a sports psychology course it's just individual tips and here you can see the tips listed and then each video now the title of the video is one of the tips. It's not just one tip in this video. It is four tips, but I just chose one of the tips. So if you want to see all of the previous tips, you'll just be able to look here 
and you can see that the next video will be published on the 5th of May. So that's already recorded, and then this one will be published on the 3rd of June. I haven't added uh, tip 20 yet. Uh, it's been released, but I haven't added it to this page. So that's the mindset tips. And you can see other pages here. So if you want to explore those, you can, you can do that. The challenges page is here. Got the introduction, the video, and then it's got forearm twists. I haven't added the car phrases yet, um, but I will do. And the last page I want to show you on, on this tour is the remote squash coaching page. Now, this is a service I offer for people who can't or don't have access to coaches. Basically, it explains everything you need to do. And I've got two prices, I've got two offers. I've had more, but I updated them. Got the $14.99, which is the taster. So you send a three minute unedited video and I give you a, a 10 minute reply. Sometimes I give you a PDF depending on your needs. And then you've got the standard one, which is a 10 minute video and you get a 30 minute reply, more or less. And there's some frequently asked questions. Uh, now I'd like to highlight this. I got this testimonial from Henry Holderness um, and he's kindly written a testimonial, but I sent him his analysis on the 20th uh, of January. And then you can see that it comes down and it goes up. Now I can't say whether my analysis helped him do this or maybe he started working harder, but it's clear that something changed and I hope that my analysis was part of that. And then we're back down to the bottom and we've got all of those. So that's the remote squash coaching page and as you can see up here it's remote squash coach and you can all uh, remote dot better squash and you can always go back to the better squash page by linking up here so this giveaway what, what am i giving away well as i mentioned in, in a few moments ago i've got the remote squash coaching section where uh, a viewer or a player will send me a video of them playing and i will analyze it talking about the technique if necessary or talking about the tactics and i'm giving away a free taster session now all you need to do is comment on this video i'm not going to collect email addresses or anything like that uh, so you just comment on the first of may I will pick a random winner. I will then comment that that person has won um, the giveaway and then I will ask that person to email me directly and then I will liaise with that person. So if you're interested in winning, you'll have to check on the 1st or the 2nd of May to see whether you won. I won't be contacting you directly because I don't want to be collecting emails and I'm sure you don't want to be giving out your email. So look out for that on the 1st or the 2nd of May. Well, there we go. That's another episode wrapped up. I hope that it was enjoyable for you. If you've got any comments or feedback or questions or even complaints, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to reply as quickly as possible. This is a subscription button. Please consider subscribing if you think my content is useful. This is a playlist of all of the other Beyond the Cutline videos. And this is a video that YouTube thinks will be interesting for you based on what you've been watching. And remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.